Touchdown, Louisiana! The Raging Cajuns are bowl eligible and will play for a spot in the Sunbelt Conference Championship game. We'll have Coach Napier's thoughts in the sit-down. We hit the links as you get to know freshman star golfer Charlie Flynn. And from senior day festivities to the winning locker room, one final look at the culture. But first, here's Dan McDonald and Gerald Broussard with a recap of Louisiana's big win over South Alabama. Louisiana's Raging Cajuns will advance to a game that will determine the West Division Championship. They defeat South Alabama by a score of 48 to 38. I'm Dan McDonald, along with my partner Gerald Broussard. And Gerald, the Cajuns knew going in if they wanted to continue their season and have a chance at a conference championship, title game, and a bowl game, they had to win tonight, and they were able to do it thanks to their offense once again. Yeah, it really did, Dan. And, and we talked in the open about the attitude of South Alabama coming in, you know, with nothing to play for and all that. The Cajuns get the first drive and, and get the ball to start the game, get the field goal. South Al's first play to throw an interception. Cajuns go in and score, but South Al comes back with the next 10. So, you know, the, the Cajuns had to continue to fight. Even when they had a separation in there, you never felt comfortable because of South Al. This game was tied at 10, and it was tied at 24 as the Jaguars ignored their record coming in, that 2-8 and eight record. They fought back twice to tie this one up, but then Louisiana was able to put up 17 in a row during that third quarter blitz, and that really, thanks to a couple of Jaguar turnovers, and that was kind of uncharacteristic because we didn't have anything after that first play, but after that, uh, the Cajun offense, I think they pretty much took over. And you could see the fourth quarter that they were able to just move the football and run the clock out. Well, and, and, and let's go back and talk about some of the – the first one, it, there's a difference between the turnover and the takeaway. The first one, Travante Booker strips the Jaguar running back and then Zion Hill falls on the ball. Cajuns don't do anything with it, though. Throw an interception, but then they get a turnover. Jaguars mess something up. Cajuns are able to go in and score. And the next two times the Jaguars had the football, the Cajuns forced a punt, which they had not forced all night long. And so the Cajun defense had their struggles, but when it was time to separate, they were able to find a way to get it done. For most of the game, Cajun defense had a lot of trouble getting South Alabama off the field. The final play count was 85 to 52. Unbelievable numbers. Uh, South Alabama ran 85 offensive plays to only 52 for the Cajuns, but I guess the good news for Louisiana, 52 plays, 48 points, and I guess that's saying something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that, that's crazy. I mean, that really is crazy. Just think if the Cajuns would have got their normal snaps. You know, if you get 70, 80 plays, we're well, not going to score 65 I don't think, you know, but maybe you do. But, but you know, some of the times, you know, there, there, there were some opportunities in there for the Cajun offense, and, and the Cajuns just were explosive with, with what they were able to do against the Jaguar defense. But when they needed to burn the clock at the end of the game, they were able to do that. Good thing they did because the Jags got, came back and scored again at one point. You know, it's just unbelievable. Early in the game, it was Jamarcus Bradley who was providing a lot of those big plays. He ended up with three touchdown catches, tied the school record for touchdown catches in the game, and actually only four guys in the country this year have more catches than that. Four guys have four touchdown catches. Bradley uh, really uh, – Cajuns didn't have to go to him in the air the second half because they got the running game going. Elijah Mitchell put it in the end zone three times. Cajuns were able to wind up, even after a slow start, they wound up with 210 rushing yards. Well, and how crazy is that? Now, you got you, you have a, a player get three touchdown receptions in one game, and in the same game you have another player that gives three rushing touchdowns in the game, and he wasn't a starter. I mean, you know, the, the, the depth of the running back position is something that the Cajuns have in that. I just, it's, it's amazing as to the way Coach Napier and his staff has been able to utilize that depth. Andre Nunez, 12 out of 18 throwing, 453 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Levi Lewis also with a touchdown pass. And what it means for Louisiana is that the Cajuns now 6-5 and five overall. They're 4-3 and three in conference play, and they will head to Monroe to take on ULM in a game that – one way or another, that will decide the West Division. 
Yeah, and it's, you know, naming rights. It's the UL game and, and that kind of stuff. And, and playing, Cages win the game, you get to go play in the conference championship. If, if the Warhawks win the game, you get to go to a bowl game. Uh, a lot riding on it. These staffs know each other. You know, Coach Sale is from Monroe, coached at ULM. Coach Leger coached at ULM and other coaches on the staff. It's, it's amazing just the nature of the, of the rivalry. Four straight wins now here at home for this Louisiana team and four straight solid offensive performances. But now they've got to go on the road, and they've got to go to a place that they won the last time they were in Monroe, but it's a place that sometimes they haven't had a lot of success. And with so much riding on it, it's going to be a lot of fun in, in up in Monroe for because not only is it for state bragging rights, it means something as far as the Sun Belt Conference this year. You know, my last game as a coach was in Monroe, and we won the game on a blocked extra point. And uh, – I don't care how you win. Just come home, Cajuns, with a win. And then we get to play in the conference championship game, a 13th game, and for a bowl game, a 14th game. Never happened in Cajun history. Cajuns win over South Alabama 48-38. to They wrap up a 5-1 and season here at Cajun Field. And now they will go play for the West Division title. For my partner, Gerald Broussard, I'm Dan McDonald from Cajun Field. Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves, a Fritos Chili Pie, Juicy Junior Burger, or Junior Wrap. Does all this comfort come at a price? Yes, it starts at 99 cents. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. Crunchy Fritos warm melty cheese all together for 99 cents. It's like a warm chili cheese Fritos family reunion. Yeah, I feel warm just thinking about it. That's the chili. I feel it too. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos chili cheese faves starting at 99 cents and try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. It's time for the sit down brought to you by Sonic, home of the Raging Cajun Cheeseburger. This is how we Sonic. The Louisiana Raging Cajuns are bowl eligible for the sixth time in eight years. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Football Time once again for the sit down with head coach Billy Napier and coach. Those two words, bowl eligible, got to feel pretty good to, to know that in your first year. Yeah, really happy for the seniors. Certainly for that to happen on senior day was a big deal. Uh, and really a good solid team win. You know, maybe at times we weren't pleased uh, with different parts of our team, but we found a way to get it done, and I'm excited about where we're headed. You always want to get off to a fast start. That's a given. And this weekend you did that. Uh, field goal in the first drive. Wallace gets an interception on South Alabama's first play of the game, and you follow that up with a 17-yard touchdown to Jamarcus Bradley. He had a fantastic run after the catch to make it a uh, 10-0. Yeah, great execution on the screen. Rico Robinson did a really good job getting out on the safety. Uh, really good job by Cole Prudham covering up the corner. And just a great run after the catch. Good accurate throw by Andre and good way to go on top 10 to nothing early. South Alabama does come back to tie the game at 10. They had some phenomenal drives, really. A 15-play drive, an 18-play drive. Those guys, and they went for a lot of fourth down conversions and converted. They were playing uh, aggressive football like they had nothing to lose. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought all week this is one of the more talented teams that we played. You know, big, long, physical team, had great team speed, and really played one of their better games. I thought they played with great effort uh, and certainly presented some issues for us on both sides. Levi Lewis comes into the game in the second quarter. One play is all it took. He goes up top on a basically a 50-50 ball to Jamarcus for his second touchdown of the day. Yeah, a little bit of an underthrow. You know, uh, Jamarcus did a great job timing his jump, went, went up and took the ball away. Uh, but really good protection. Levi did a good job standing in there, worked his way through his progression and threw a touchdown, big play in the game. On the ensuing kickoff, you go onside. Kyle File recovers his own kick. Give me your uh, thought process there. 
Well, I felt like the play count was getting a little bit out of whack. You know, our mm -hmm. defense had been out there two long possessions in a row. We had scored really quickly, so we didn't do anything to kind of fix that issue. So perfect time to uh, break out one of our weapons. We've been practicing the entire year. Uh, Kyle executed well. Both of our fives did a really good job blocking the guards. We recovered it and a huge momentum shift in the game. Yeah, and then it pays off, obviously, five plays later. Andre finds, guess who, Jamarcus Bradley once again for his third touchdown. That put him up 24-10. Uh, yeah, really, we had the game in control at this point. You know, it felt like two touchdown lead, obviously the onside kick, back-to-back uh, -back scores. Uh, but they were able to put a drive together right before the half. And this is an area where I felt like maybe we could have uh, done a little bit better. Yeah, you mentioned it. Uh, they scored right before the half, and then they come out in the third quarter, put another six on the board. But uh, the quick strike offense hits. And the, the lead, uh, I'm sorry, the tie game only lasted 39 seconds right. because uh, Elijah goes 45 yards for a score. Yeah, great execution. Um, you know, Chase Rogers had a critical block on the backside. Really good, did, did a good job on the perimeter, and Elijah got to the second level and finished the run uh, to get us back on top and capture the momentum once again. Uh, the next three drives end in turnovers. Uh, we got two fumble recovers, one from Travante Booker, the second one from Andre Landry. Uh, it had to be good to see us getting some takeaways and then also having a guy like Andre, you know, a young guy, uh, taking part and making a difference. Yeah, three takeaways by our defense, which was huge. Uh, we, we only got 10 points out of those three takeaways. I thought that was a big part of the game. You know, our defense was coming up with stops, created some takeaways. I uh, felt like we needed to get more points. We turned the ball over an interception and only got a field goal out of the second one. So that was another opportunity similar to those two possessions around halftime where we could have put the game out of, uh, out of touch for the opponent and we didn't quite get it done. Fourth quarter, South Alabama does cut the lead to 10 once again, but that mitchell Regis combination behind the offensive line got it going and put you back up 17. Yeah, big big possession in the game. I think there was about seven minutes left. Uh, we were able to chew up about five and a half minutes and give it back to them with only about two minutes left. So offensive line, the tight ends, they did a great job, and both backs really were effective at that point. Talk a little bit about these amazing statistics. Um, I believe they had the ball for 93 plays or 92 plays. We had it for 53. Time of possession was in their favor, 36 to 24 but you come out with a 10-point win. Yeah, really efficient on offense. You know, really, I think we punted twice, one turnover. Um, and I think in general, we did, a, we did a great job in the kicking game. Lots of hidden yardage throughout that game. G great on the cover units. Really good job, not only kickoff returns, but punt returns. So we won both of those phases, and we did enough on defense. We got some critical stops, got some takeaways. Uh, and ultimately, we're in position and had the game in hand at the end. So here we go. Raging Cajuns, Warhawks for uh, the Western Division Championship and that spot in the first ever Sunbelt Conference Championship game. Um, just looking back, when you started the season one and three, uh, just talk about how this team has evolved and gotten to this position. Well, we focused on making improvement, eliminating deficiencies, really growing up together just in terms of being a great teammate learning how to compete, keep our poise, deal with adversity within games. Uh, and I think our staff's done a great job, but we've gotten great leadership from the players. Uh, and I think we've gotten in position here where we're a contender. Uh, morale is high and our guys are excited about this opportunity. Just talk about the Warhawks just a little bit. Uh, winners of four out of, the, out of their last five, the only loss to Arkansas State, but they're coming in playing good football. Yeah, you know, a lot of respect for their team and certainly uh, similar to us, maybe a few hiccups early, uh, but have really improved as the season's went and they're, they're playing good football at this point in time. Let's talk a little bit about Senior Day this past weekend. Uh, just talk about that group as a whole and how they made your life, I guess, a little bit easier in your first year as a head coach. Yeah, special group, you know, and, and I think we had 26 young men out there before the game. Uh, and lots of different stories, mm -hmm. lots of different ways of getting here, some for one year, some for six. You know, we have all types of different stories. But, you know, I told those guys thank you in the team meeting Friday and really just ask them to give us a chance in the beginning. And they did that, not only myself, but our entire staff. 
uh, and they've bought in and been great examples to the rest of the team. You know, they're, they're a solid group of people, not just good football players. This is one of our last uh, sit-downs with you for the season, but just out of curiosity, I'm just wondering, going into you know, being the head coach for the first time ever, what's something you may have learned over the course of this year that you didn't know going into this season? Well, I think you, as you grow as a first-time head coach, you start to realize how critical it is to have great people around you. You know, and I think that's one of the things we've done really well. We've hired well, we've got a great staff, not only the coaches, but the support staff, strength and conditioning staff. Uh, and you need, you, you know, you're dependent on those people to take great pride in what they do. Uh, and I think we hit a lot of home runs here. And that's one of the things, one of the reasons we've had success. All right, Coach. Always thanks for the time. Raging Cajuns and Warhawks at 2.30 this weekend for the Sunbelt Conference Western Division Championship. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Football, a conversation with golfer Charlie Flynn. for the steakhouse bacon cheeseburger? The smoky black pepper mayo deserve at least the full steakhouse treatment. Very impressed. Someone just walked in, we only have one tablecloth. The steakhouse burger and tots for only $4.99. Get them now and try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. Hi, my name is Charlie Flynn. I'm a freshman on the Louisiana golf team. To have a freshman come in and lead, lead the team in scoring average and, and to come in and, and, and be a leader on the golf course, it's just it's a testament for what the future has in store because uh, it's just his ceiling is high and it's just going to get better and better. I'm extremely lucky getting to play in all those tournaments and uh, building my confidence levels up and growing my game. So this, all those tournaments and all those, all those really good competitions I've, I've played in. Uh, just really helped me come in and make a good transition into college golf. Charlie's fundamentals and his physical ability to play this game uh, from tee to green uh, is, is, as a young player, stuck out immediately. I've, uh, I've known Coach Slyman for a pretty good, pretty good time now, probably since I was about 12 or 11. He maybe started looking at me. And uh, I've actually known Coach Derek for about five years or so. He, uh, we, we put him up for housing one time when he was on the pro tour, and so we got to know each other then. But uh, they're, they're one of the best coaching staff in, in college golf, I think, and I think I uh, chose the right decision coming here and work with them. We recruited Charlie for quite some time. Uh, you know, we started early on the process, and, and we shared with Charlie at, at a young age that we wanted him to, to be recruited, not only by us, but go out and, and explore, uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we want you to want to be a raging Cajun, and uh, that's the beautiful thing in this relationship. Charlie truly, uh, truly has pride in wearing that logo. It meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to my uh, my family, my friends, able to represent Louisiana. Uh, I could have gone out of state, but I just I, I really wanted to play in Louisiana and just represent my home state. At a very young age, Charlie grew up in Alexandria, Louisiana, and then uh, noticed that. He could better his golf game by maybe moving to Shreveport, which is about roughly two hours away. So as a, as a sophomore in high school, Charlie moved on his own uh, to go to, to Bird High School, where there was a plethora of some top-notch golfers in the likes of Sam Burns, Philip Barbary, 
Hayden White, uh, Nathan Janson, guys from Shreveport that we've seen go on and have some stellar, not only college careers, but ones having a significant uh, professional career on the PGA Tour. Well, the reason we moved in the first place was uh, while I was living in Alexandria, I was, I was really the only junior golfer that would uh, practice almost every day and like stay out there till dark. So I was by myself a lot because my parents were at work. And uh, so I really just found myself not getting a whole lot better. So we decided to move up to Shreveport, which is filled with like amazing golfers. I'd say the overall move to Shreveport just made me who the golfer I am today. I got a whole lot better up there. And uh, it was probably the best decision I'd ever made. It, it, it took a big sacrifice and a mature sacrifice to live by yourself as a 16, 17, 18 year old. It takes a lot of maturity. And uh, so he's stepping on campus this fall, uh, knowing how to wash his own clothes, knowing how to cook for himself, um, knowing how to do, do some of those things that the normal freshman maybe doesn't know. I had to wash my clothes and a little bit and uh, do the dishes, but uh, never really had to grocery shop, never got that far. So I'm extremely thankful for uh, what my parents have done for me. I mean, I can't thank them enough. So that's why, that's why I want to get back to them when I'm older. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, they made some, some really big sacrifices for me. Right now, on the field between the whistles. On the field between the whistles. Kick the ball off, get a stop, and let's go play. All right, here we go. Together on three. The Steakhouse Bacon Cheeseburger from Sonic. Crispy bacon, melty cheese black pepper mayo, and grilled onions. No reservations required. The Steakhouse Burger and Tots for only $4.99. Get them now. 10 teams with one goal, but only two will have the chance. And only one will rise above. I'm head coach Billy Napier, and you're watching Inside Louisiana Football. Let's go, Cajuns! Let's go, Cajuns! He's been here for a short time, but he's made a big impact on a lot of players, and it's, it's special to him to, to send the seniors out right. One more mission in front of the home crowd. No, I did not think it would come this fast. It's been a long process, and it came fast. Whoo! One more, huh? One more, man. One more. And while you're in the moment, you never really think about how fast it's going. And when it's here, it's here, man. You can't go back. And a lot of people take for granted that, you know, to get to play Division One football, and I think you know, a lot of the reason that, that it happens for a lot of people is because of the people they have behind them. A defensive back out of New Orleans, Louisiana, number 48, Vincent Thomas. So many people don't make it to this point. We blessed to do what we do every day. down there is the pass and intercepted and it is Deuce Wallace that comes up with the interception Nunez rolling right throwing back to the left on a screen got his man at the 15 down to the 10 down to the 5 touchdown Louisiana it is Jamarcus Bradley and it's
it's Conley, and here he goes. Lewis going for all of it to the end zone, and the pass is caught. Touchdown, Louisiana. Outside this kick. one's an onside kick try. And he got it. <laughs> Nunez back to throw. Steps, throws, touchdown, Louisiana. We talk all the time about expecting adversity, okay? Now's the time to be the best teammates you've ever been. Now's the time to stick together more than you ever have. Right now, on the field between the whistles. On the field between the whistles. Kick the ball off, get a stop, and let's go play. All right, here we go. Together on three. One, two, three, together. Yeah. Hand off to Mitchell. Mitchell's got a hole to the 30, to the 20. Elijah Mitchell to the house. Touchdown, Louisiana. Mitchell, touchdown, Louisiana. Hey, this is Darius Kidd. I want to thank the Cajun Nation for the best five years of my life. Let's give it up for these seniors. They're bow <laughs> The message the entire time is to continue to get better, eliminate the deficiencies, and number one, stick together. Okay, that's what I'm most proud of. There's plenty of times out there where you could have lost your poise, you could have started pointing fingers, start blaming other people, and you didn't do that. You stuck together, and that's why you won the game, man, okay? We said in the very beginning it was not going to be about ability. We got ability in this room, okay? It was going to be about making improvements, sticking together, and getting in position, right, to where you're in contention, you got an opportunity to play for it. Guess what, man? Congratulations. Yes, sir. Congratulations. You checked the second box, and we're going to Monroe next week to play for the Western Division Championship. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, together! Yeah. 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 I said again, how you spell win? You will. Feel real good, man. Seeing class trying to go out the right way. Feel good for the young boys, too, to let them know what being bowl eligible feel like. Um, this started a new tradition for them, and we leaving a legacy. Yeah, you feel good to win, man. We some winners, we worked our butt off, but hey, we feel good. Clap! <laughs>